and chair and members of the committee. The question is, how can this actually happen in America? That is the question that audience members most frequently ask when confronted with the fact that they just saw a musical group that had absolutely nothing to do with the group that they paid to see. This is a sophisticated form of identity theft in which imposter groups are duping consumers and stealing the names, the remuneration, and the legacy of the pioneers, particularly of the pioneers of rock and roll and, and doo-wop, although it does extend into later eras. So the bottom line is that these imposters simply need to yip, 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 boom, 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 get a job. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Becca. But it really is, it is a serious issue, and that, but the bottom line is they need to go away and get a job. Um, I'm speaking in support of AB 702 in my capacity as chairman of the Truth in Music Committee at the Vocal Group Hall of Fame. We have passed a similar bill in nine states so far. They are Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Illinois, um, Michigan, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Virginia, uh, South Carolina, and North Dakota. Fourteen more states are currently sponsored and in various stages of progress, which include a lot of big ones, California, Florida, New York, um, Nevada, which is obviously very important to us. Diane has, this is a little picture of an ad for a show at the Sahara Hotel that goes on every night, um, which features, well this says, not that this matters, the buff ladders, Barry Hobbs' drifters, not that the qualifier really matters anyway, Colonel Gunter's coasters, but you can't even see the qualifiers, not that they make any difference. The bottom line is that none of these people have anything to do with the ladders, drifters, or coasters whatsoever, period, in the sad Southwest Airlines magazine, um, U.S. Air Magazine, it's everywhere. Uh, the 14 states include California, Florida, New York, Nevada, Missouri, which is important because of Branson, Wisconsin, Maine, Texas, and much more. Um, so all over the country. We do expect to have passed half of the country by the end of 2007. And we have already noticed a significant deterrent effect in states where the bill has passed. Uh, they don't seem to be coming into the states that they know have the bill quite as much. Uh, the way this works, these imposter groups flourish where the unscrupulous promoters who've learned how to work the system make specious claims that they can't back up to names of famous groups and put out multiple underpriced units and then basically dare anybody to stop them. Uh, existing law, unfortunately, has failed miserably in this regard, which is the reason for AB 702 which is a law that shifts, what the law really does is shifts the burden to the imposters to either back up their claims of association with the authentic groups or stop duping the public. So simply put, AB 702 addresses live performance and live performance only, states you need to have an authentic member of the recording group on stage in the group that's performing that night unless you have a valid federally registered trademark for that name where you clearly and unconfusingly advertise yourself as a tribute or a salute. So this law will finally protect California concert goers from being duped by imposters and the unscrupulous promoters who foist them on the public without revealing who they truly are, or more correctly, who they truly aren't. <laughs> and then I just, on a personal note, to, to conclude what I have to say, um, I have been really lucky my whole career. I, you know, I started out playing classical piano as a kid. I still play a little bit of it in my show. But then somehow this other kind of music called doo-wop came along, or rock and roll, you know, when I was a little kid. And I loved that kind of music, too. I used to try to play, you know, Chopin, Mazurka's practice while I had my transistor radio earpiece run up, you know. I was really listening to Yak and Yak, and my mother didn't know it. So ever since we began the rock and roll revival with my old group, Sha Na Na, I've been able to live my childhood as an adult, you know, with that kind of music that I always loved from when I was a little kid. Um, I always enjoyed that music, especially the, the, the doo-wop sound, you know, the street corner sound. And as a result, I got to meet pretty much every one of the people who made those records that I loved as a kid. Um, and I'm honored at this point in my life to call most of them, all of them really, my, my friends, you know, the, the real people from the coasters and the platters and the drifters and the Marcells and the Shirelles. Um, 
So what I want to say is, unfortunately, though, I've seen so many of them suffer with this problem at a point in their careers when they should be enjoying the fruits of having created this music uh, that, that brought races together in America, this music that really deeply changed the world. It had as much to do with changing the world as any piece of legislation the way all of us were interacting when we were when we were young. And well you're you're talking to the right community. I know, I know. <laughs> we all we all have like that. I know. And you <laughs> you watch these you know their their dignity is taken by this. I mean it's a consumer bill, so it's about the audience. But um, if if you if you watch a baby boomer audience leap to its feet at the end of one of these shows, <laughs> when they're honoring the body of work, the legacy, the and you got to say the folk singers, pleasure, the folk singers, and those are the ones that folk singers too. Those are the ones that jump up for us. Right, it's the but, same but, thing. My chair, my chair is a baby boomer. I'm old, Bill. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 